Today is a departure from my usual habit of criticizing Bill Nye. Instead, I turn my focus to the Young Turks. The Young Turks are a news outlet, to the extent that reading trending headlines from around the web while yelling, of course, qualifies an organization to be a news outlet. I've frequently found, especially recently, that the Young Turks interpret news stories in a way that is either careless or disingenuous. With this video, I'll look at two contemporaneous Young Turk stories and describe some problems with each of them. The two stories I'll examine are A. Cenk Uger's insightful analysis into why Trump would fire Comey. He is so stupid. And B. Jenk's poorly thought out theory involving the Russians and Trump's son. The Young Turks YouTube channel posted a clip titled, quote, Trump's pathetic excuse for firing James Comey, end quote. Fun note, the title looks like this. You might notice the word pathetic in caps, which is an odd choice as Jenk criticizes other people who write in caps. And then in caps, because he's a child. Hypocritical capitalization aside, Jenk's main argument in this segment is that Trump fired Comey because Trump was afraid Comey would uncover something in the Russia investigation. Jenk supports this premise by reading from a Politico article that cites unnamed advisors to the president. Quote, he had grown enraged by the Russia investigation, two advisors said, frustrated by his inability to control the mushrooming narrative around Russia. He repeatedly asked aides why the Russia investigation wouldn't disappear and demanded that they speak out for him. He would sometimes scream at television clips about the probe, one advisor said, end quote. Cenk then concludes that because Trump is so angry, he's obviously guilty. The things that he gets most mad at are the ones that are truest. Throughout this story, and in general, Cenk acts like it is a given that Trump committed some kind of crime with Russia. The reality is, of course he did it, of course he did it. This is irresponsible journalism. No criminal link between Trump and Russia has been shown. While US intelligence agencies claim that Russia acted to interfere with the US election, from the Department of Homeland Security, quote, the US intelligence community is confident that the Russian government directed the recent compromises of emails from US persons and institutions, including from US political organizations. The recent disclosures of alleged hacked emails on sites like DCLeaks.com and WikiLeaks and by the Guccifer 2.0 online persona are consistent with the methods and motivations of Russian-directed efforts." End quote. The U.S. intelligence community has not released compelling evidence of this claim. Furthermore, the allegations from the intelligence agencies are that Russia was behind a series of email hacks not that Trump was involved in criminal wrongdoing. When Jenk in particular, and the Young Turks in general, depart from established facts, as they frequently do, and start bashing Trump with their own poorly explained theories, they are behaving as poor journalists. Jenk will drive home the idea that Trump is stupid. Donald Trump misunderstands the world. What a knucklehead he is here. Oh my God, that's so unbelievably stupid. That is so stupid. He is way, way dumber than anyone else thinks. He is that dumb. Who is that stupid? It's unbelievable how stupid he is. Because it's a stupid knuckleheaded move to do. Even dumber than I could even imagine. You think this guy's smart enough to cover his tracks? No. One of his knuckleheaded sons, you idiot. He gets mad, of course, the child does. And you should go, why would he be you guys are playing so sad? He is so stupid. I can't say it enough. He is such a child. I think this is also an overreach, as Dr. Jordan Peterson can explain. Um, his IQ is clearly well above average. Um, I don't know. And he's done complex things in his life, and a lot of them. And that indicates that there's something to him. You know, and he hasn't been successful just in one domain. He's been successful in multiple complex domains each of which were quite difficult. It's very difficult to be a reality TV star that's successful, mm -hmm. right? It's very difficult to work in the construction business, and especially on large projects. And I know he's had his economic ups and downs, but he stayed in the game for a long time, very stressful. He's very stress resistant. So he's no, he's no dummy. Uh, and I mean, it's nice to always think that your political opponent is just stupid, but he's done too many complex things for me to assume that he's somehow if he wasn't 
smart. He couldn't have done those things. Yeah, I'm glad you're acknowledging that because when I see the people that are in hysteric mode and just saying he's this evil nutbag who doesn't know what he's doing and all this stuff, it just seems like such a lazy way of thinking about it. You don't have to like any of the things. You may not like the way he speaks or any of that, but the idea that somehow this is a dumb person, I think, is discounting of just the way humans have to work. Uh, this is interesting from Super Chat. Do you have well, any- Well, he also won the presidency. Right. With it, a completely it, original campaign. And, and it's like, and without, without spending much money, it's like, okay, is he lucky? Because is that what you're saying? It's just lucky. The second segment I'll cover in this video is a clip posted to the Young Turks YouTube channel titled, quote, Eric Trump is staggeringly stupid, end quote. The thrust of this story is that in 2008, a golf reporter was playing golf with Eric Trump. The reporter asked him where the money to build the golf courses came from, and Eric informed him that he had a $100 million investment for golf courses out of Russia. Naturally, the word Russia sets off Jenk's conspiracy alarm, and he runs with it to conclude that this reporter's story is ironclad evidence against Donald Trump, who will definitely be caught for it, whatever it is in this case. One obvious problem with Jenk's interpretation is that the conspiracy Jenk imagines is that the Russians, years before the 2016 election, gave Trump a $100 million loan in order to... what? Does Jenk think that the Russians knew Trump would become president back then? That seems a bit of a stretch. Trump never had any other political positions or political information. He worked in real estate and not defense contracting. So why would the Russians be giving Trump tons of money? Maybe the Russian mob is using Trump in some kind of illegal conspiracy? But why would the Russians choose a billionaire celebrity who is frequently under audit and at odds with the current political powers instead of a money launderer who was a bit more low-key? Cenk does have something of a theory. Cenk thinks Trump got deep into debt with the Russians. He owes them a lot of money and now is in their total thrall. Trump had a lot of his projects financed by the Russians well before he got into the presidential race and that perhaps he owed the Russians a lot of money and that perhaps that could be part of the connection as to why they helped him in the race. And now that is the conclusion of our intelligence agencies and what they might have expected in return. Okay, now of course the Trumps come out and furiously deny this, shocking. As you know, when you owe someone a lot of money, their government automatically enlists you in an anti-American conspiracy. There's literally nothing else that could happen, nothing else that you could do. Oh wait, now that I think about it, you could declare bankruptcy and nullify your debts, which Trump has done on multiple occasions before. Of course, Jenk doesn't bother to bring up any of this. He's too busy calling Trump stupid. There's a news story that mentioned both Trump and Russia, so it no doubt triggered Jenk's Google alert. And now he can rant about how Trump must be guilty and is so stupid for another five minutes on his YouTube channel. One other issue I'd like to bring up is Jenk's or phrasing when he says that this is the conclusion of our intelligence agencies. Perhaps he owed the Russians a lot of money and that perhaps that could be part of the connection as to why they helped him in the race and now that is the conclusion of our intelligence agencies. What Jenk means here is that Russian efforts benefited Donald Trump's presidential campaign. That's the conclusion of our intelligence agencies as I read earlier. Our intelligence agencies believe that the email hacking that took place during the election campaign, one, benefited Donald Trump, and two, was perpetrated by the Russians or Russian-associated actors. However, the way that Cenk says this, it makes it sound like our intelligence agencies are concluding that Cenk's conspiracy theory that Donald Trump owed a lot of money to the Russians and is now working on their behalf. He makes it sound like that conspiracy theory has been confirmed by our intelligence agencies, which is not true. I hope this is just a case of poor speaking on Jenk's part and not an intentional deception. Jenk does briefly address Eric Trump's response to the claims of the Gulf reporter. Eric Trump says, ah, it's a recollection from some guy three years ago through a third person. No, no, it's not through a third person, it's the guy you talked to. No, no, it is through a third party. The Gulf reporter in question, James Dodson, recalls the three-year-old conversation to WBUR via a reporter. 
Bill Littlefield. So it's literally through a third person. Cenk just can't help himself. Even on minor details like this, he must call everything that the Trump family does wrong. Why would you randomly tell a guy that works as a golf writer about, oh no, don't worry about it, all these things are funded by the Russians, um, unless it was true. That's a super, super weird thing to make up, right? Yes, why would you randomly tell a golf reporter that your golf course was funded by the Russians? And why would that reporter remember such a banal fact for years and then suddenly recall it to a different reporter three days before his book, where you can read more about it, is published? While we're on the source article that Cenk's story comes from, let's read a bit more of the story to see if it seems like a genuine recounting of an event that really happened. Quote, Dodson recalls, and he took my arm, a real bro hug, and we're crossing this long room. And he says, you're the one that writes all the books. And I said, well, I've written a few. And he said, I haven't read them because I really don't get much chance to read books, but I write books. Have you read my books? I deadpanned. I said, yes, they're all stacked up on my bedside table. I haven't gotten to them yet, but he didn't seem to get my joke. And we're walking in this bro hug. I mean, very snug. Let's jump to the Washington Post real quick. No reason. Quote, as for Trump's self-avowed germophobia, he reportedly will not press a ground floor elevator button on the principle that it is the most frequently touched. And in his third book, 1997's Art of the Comeback, Trump elaborated on handshakes. One of the curses of American society is the simple act of shaking hands. And the more successful and famous one becomes, the worse this terrible custom seems to get. He wrote, I happen to be a clean hands freak. I feel much better after I thoroughly wash my hands, which I do as much as possible." End quote. Where were we? Oh, right. The germophobic subliterate Trump had our famous author with an upcoming book release clasped in a tight bro hug. He's still got me in the bro hug. And he says, come on, those are nothing. Those are softballs. And he says, one more for the road. Give me something with some mustard. And this is what I said. Well, okay, fair enough. My wife and I watched The Apprentice for the first time the other night in preparation for coming over here. And honestly, the question that kept popping up in my head is, are you as big an a-hole as you seem, or do you just play one on TV? End quote. So who knows? Maybe the story happened the way Dodson said it did. Maybe Dodson embellished a bit to get his story in the news for free publicity. All we can do with a story like this is judge who seems more credible. What I do know is that Jank and the Young Turks constantly overreach. It's good that they're upfront about their liberal bias, but being upfront doesn't excuse the fact that they let their bias get in the way of talking about the news. It's fair to not like the Trump family. It's not fair to let your dislike of them lead you to read headlines and shout invective at them and pretend that you're doing the news. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by clicking the like button. The upcoming subjects will be healthcare, more Bill Nye, the Young Turks, similar videos to this, and I'll investigate some Russian hacking claims. If you're interested, please click subscribe. Thanks for your time.